Okay, just an explanation to residuals. They are for merit and excellence purposes. But what they are, um, you'll probably understand by the definition, because residual means the little bit that's left over. Um, I've just done a schematic of a scatter plot and tried to put the line of best fit in there of all the dots there. In each case, there is a distance between the equate like because this line right has an equation and it comes up on your um, computers as y equals m x plus c or in that format c being where it cuts the y intercept and m being the gradient right that was probably year 11 uh, maths um, anyway residuals is the difference between the equation and the plot okay um, and these are positive residuals okay that distance there that distance there and that small distance there so when I plot the residual graph just move down a bit um, the graph will look somewhat like this for those positive residuals I'll get underneath this plot I'll get a very small because this is zero this is like I don't know what the scale is maybe plus 10 minus 10 minus 10 uh, this plot here will be up here this is much like on the time series graph in fact it was all called residuals on time series graph as well it was the difference between the model and the raw data Okay, it's the same deal here. The difference between that's the raw data, that's the model. So you'd get a positive plot right below there. That is that dis that distance and that distance are the same distance. Okay, and then you'd get one more positive residual for that one there. Okay, and then if I do the negative residuals in a different color, Okay, so this plot would have a negative residual right about there. So that distance and that distance go hand in hand. That distance and... Okay, so you kind of get the idea. Okay, so obviously there won't be any, well, there won't be any vertical lines on it. But there will be a whole bunch of plots. So, and what we're looking for is an even scatter of the residuals. Um, actually, probably a better word is a random scatter of the residuals. If you see any patterns in the residuals, it will, it will basically say that a straight line curve is not the most appropriate model. So, um, I think from here I'll do an example um, of using the sports data. So this is the one I, I was using yesterday, using someone's body weight to predict their lean body mass. So that's the, basically the weight of their bones. And a little bit um, I'll just add into this video that I missed yesterday was, um, if you add to plot a straight line, you can also code more variables Okay, so that dot there, code more variables, and let's just try again, add to plot, code more variables, okay, and see down here, you can actually add um, another variable, and let me show you what it does, for example, you could show with colour coding which ones are male and which ones are female, and you can see they're quite a distinct pattern, can't you? Alternatively, you could look at um, their height. Okay, and it gives you a scale on the right. Obviously, the shorter the person, the less weight and lean body mass they have. The taller the person on the right, the more weight and the more lean body mass. Um, what else can we do? Try 
try. Not sure what BMI does. Anyone remember what BMI is? So you'd have to go look at what body mass index is, but um, definitely a some sort of pattern happening there as well. Okay, so that was just a, a little tool that you can use in your internal. Coming back to plotting a residual using Insight, I'll just move this a bit. It's similar to adding a new variable that you did for um, time series. So you need to go to manipulate variables, create new variable, and call this um, equation. Now, something I've forgotten to do is to get the equation to line. There it is. Okay. Over here, I'm going to write that equation formula into my new variable. Um, 0.87 multiplied by, and be, I'm being very careful to make sure I spell everything ex exactly as it's written, otherwise the computer's not going to like me minus 0 0.66 so I've just copied that equation which was the blue line equation exactly into there try submitting and it did like me because see over here I've now got a a new variable called equation manipulate variables again add another variable and this one's going to be called what? residual and remember I told you the residual is always the difference between the raw data and the equation so and in here I'm going to write LBM i.e. the independent as the dependent variable LBM minus equation and spelt the same way as I sp capitals are all important and great it liked me and to do my residual graph I'm going to plot the same independent variable weight along the x-axis so I'll leave weight there but instead of LBM I'm going to plot residuals and it should have positive residuals and negative residuals because if you look at my my line, I've got some above the line and some below the line. So if I drop that into there, I've got positive residuals, negative residuals. I could clear that color stuff. Um, remove additions. I'm not sure why. Oh, I see. Removal additions. There we go. Yeah. You shouldn't have a blue line going through the middle of it because that's the um, the line of best fit and it makes no sense to put a line of best fit for a residual graph, does it? The line of best fit will probably be the line Y equals zero, the horizontal line, but you don't need it. Um, so that's an interesting graph. There should be no pattern. If there is a pattern, then um, probably the line of best fit, or sorry, a linear model is not the best uh, model. Um, you can s quite quickly see your outliers. See that plot there? If I change it back to LBM, and you'd be able to compare them if you were copying and pasting the one at just above 80, that's that one there. Okay, if I go back to residual, that one there is definitely an outlier. Um, yeah, that one there seems to be the biggest outlier, doesn't it? Can you see any other outliers on here? Probably this one, the one just above 80 on the residual plot. 
10 minutes.